Imagine you're having one of those days when everything just feels right. Things are flowing, little problems seem to solve themselves, and you get that quiet feeling that today might be your lucky day. Then suddenly you glance down at the ground and notice a small, shiny stone that really stands out from everything around it. You pick it up, tilt it toward the light, and a question pops into your mind. Could this be a diamond? The truth, however, is that right after a major flood, it's very unlikely you'd be feeling this way, especially when the force of the water has been strong enough to destroy roads, houses, and everything in its path. But even in the middle of all that damage, it's exactly in this kind of scenario that opportunities like this appear. And I'm going to explain why. Floods, as destructive as they can be, have the power to reveal stones that were previously hidden. The force of the water pulls away soil and lighter gravel, leaving certain minerals exposed right on the surface. Imagine that after a flood, nature might be leaving subtle clues for you, clues that would otherwise go completely unnoticed on any normal day. It may sound a bit hard to believe, but finding valuable gemstones in nature is not easy. And that's exactly what makes this video so special. While most people overlook these stones, someone like you notices that something about them is different, almost as if nature itself is trying to tell you that something valuable is hiding there. And while you're watching this video, many people who understand this are already searching for these natural treasures. And you can be one of them, exploring new places, spotting what most people ignore, and maybe discovering something that can truly change your life for the better. Now think about this. During a flood, a strong current drags soil away and deposits large amounts of sediment, especially minerals that may be small stones trapped underground for thousands of years. Stones that you would normally dismiss without ever realizing they could actually be precious gemstones like diamond, quartz, or even agate. Sometimes the world changes in the smallest details. But how can you know whether the region where you live hides these treasures? The erosions caused by floods are extremely common in areas near riverbanks and steep slopes. So even when a natural disaster happens, you still have a chance to find something valuable, or at least something no one imagined was there. I'm not talking about careless adventure, but about noticing what has always been there, only now made visible. Still, safety always comes first, so seek guidance from a professional and wait until it's safe to explore these areas. So stay with me until the end of this video as I show you how to find precious stones after a flood in the right place and in the right way. And you'll see how small changes in the way you look at everyday situations can make all the difference. To understand why floods create such rare opportunities, we need to visualize the journey of a diamond from its origin all the way to the moment it lands in river gravel. Diamonds are not born in rivers. They reach them as kimberlite and lamproit pipes slowly break down through erosion. This erosion releases extremely resistant crystals that travel downhill, pass through ravines, and eventually settle into heavy gravel beds. But this natural process is slow, depending on rain and steady water flow over many years. A flood, however, does all of that at once. The water gains speed, tears away huge volumes of sediment, moves heavy rock fragments, and concentrates high-density minerals in places where turbulence decreases. And that is exactly where diamonds tend to accumulate. Because a rough diamond, despite its strong shine, is not light. It has high density, similar to or greater than garnet, and only lower than minerals such as magnetite and ilmenite. When the current begins to slow down, these heavier materials settle together, forming what geologists call placers, or concentrated alluvial deposits. That is why when a flood recedes, you should not search the entire riverbank. You should look for those pockets of dark material, usually made of heavy sands, rounded garnets, magnetite, hematite, and small water-worn pebbles. If these minerals are present, the environment had enough energy to transport dense materials, exactly the kind of setting where a diamond may have been left behind. Observing this natural organization of gravel is the first step toward an efficient search. If you want to find diamonds after floods, you must learn to read the mineral signature that water arranges across the terrain. Garnets are one of the best secondary indicators. They appear as tiny reddish to wine-colored spheres mixed into darker gravel. If you find concentrations of garnet, 
It means the current was strong enough to transport dense minerals, which greatly increases the chance that diamonds are hiding in that same pocket. Magnetite and ilmenite, identified by their darker metallic shine, are also excellent signs because they often accompany weathered kimberlite in deeply eroded ultra-basic rocks. Another important indicator is the deposition pattern itself. After floods, you should inspect inner river bends, areas behind large natural obstacles, drops in elevation and depressions where the water loses strength. These spots act as natural traps. That's where heavy sand accumulates, often forming a dark surface layer that contrasts sharply with the lighter gravel around it. When you find this darker band, examine transparent or translucent fragments with sharp edges, strong luster, and unusual light behavior. A rough diamond does not look like a cut one. It can be irregular, with curved or granular surfaces and a greasy appearance in diffuse light. Even so, its shine is far stronger than quartz. A simple test is rotating the crystal under sunlight. Diamonds produce brighter, sharper reflections, while quartz shows a softer, glass-like shine. Quartz often displays clearer internal lines or cleavages, while diamonds tend to look more compact or cloudy inside. After identifying a promising spot and setting aside a few samples with unusual shine, it's time to perform basic tests before even thinking about taking the material to a specialist. Hardness is always the first criterion, but it must be applied gently. A diamond, despite being the hardest mineral on earth, can chip if exposed to the wrong lateral pressure. For that reason, the ideal approach is placing the suspected surface against glass with the least pressure possible, just enough to see whether it scratches. Quartz, for example, also scratches glass but breaks more irregularly, showing conchoidal fracture patterns and less defined marks. When a diamond touches glass, the scratch is clean, almost surgical, with no loose fragments. Another essential observation is how the stone reacts to light. Rotating the mineral from different angles reveals nuances that an untrained eye would overlook. Diamonds produce concentrated direct flashes even in rough form. This happens because their refractive index is extremely high, allowing even tiny fragments to emit quick, intense light bursts noticeable from a distance. Quartz and feldspar crystals, on the other hand, show a softer glassy luster and lower dispersion. A rough diamond surface may look greasy, but its internal shine is strong, almost aggressive. When you move the piece under natural light, the reaction is immediate. Density is another valuable clue. Even without a scale, you can feel that a rough diamond seems too heavy for its size. This sensation comes from its higher density compared to quartz. And when placed side by side, the difference becomes obvious even for beginners. In the sediment pockets left by the flood, where darkened garnets and magnetite gather, this density difference is not a coincidence. Nature organizes itself predictably. Dense minerals always migrate to areas where the current weakens, which is why these spots deserve careful examination. A simple visual test involves inspecting the surface. Water-worn quartz tends to display small impact lines, microfractures, and a slightly sandy texture. Diamonds, however, keep firmer edges in a surface that resists abrasion, even after tumbling through gravel for long distances. Small curved features known as growth marks are common and frequently seen in malformed rough diamonds. These marks create irregular textures, but never hide the characteristic internal brilliance. If the flood has removed large volumes of sediment, another valuable detail is the geological context. Finding a diamond isolated in light-colored gravel is rare. It usually appears alongside indicator minerals like garnet, ilmenite, and magnetite, which deposit under the same flow conditions. Recognizing this mineral set greatly increases the accuracy of any initial evaluation because each indicator is a piece of a larger puzzle. When these pieces appear together, you know you are standing in an environment with enough energy to transport heavy materials while depositing valuable minerals. Even so, none of these tests replace professional analysis. They simply work as an efficient early filter to separate what deserves attention from what is just ordinary gravel. Using a hand lens, examining crystal faces, and identifying cubic or octahedral tendencies all help build confidence, but the final step should always be confirming with an expert. And it is this combination of careful observation, awareness, and basic knowledge that can turn a simple post-flood walk into a truly meaningful discovery. 
Now that you can see something most people overlook, it becomes clear that floods don't just reshape a river's course. They reveal deep layers where dense minerals have been trapped for thousands of years. Each rounded garnet mixed into dark gravel, each band of heavy sand settling behind a natural obstacle, and every shift in sediment texture tells a precise geological story. A story you now know how to interpret. Details that once seemed insignificant are now practical tools that help you locate where diamonds and other high-value minerals might be hiding. When you return to the river after a flood, you realize the landscape is never random. It's organized by the force of water, the slope of the land, and the density of the minerals involved. That's why applying what you learned in regions with a history of kimberlite deposits, ultra-basic rocks, or intense metamorphism significantly increases your chances of making a real find. Not because you're relying on luck, but because you're reading the natural behavior of materials. The logic of alluvial deposits becomes clear once you understand the pattern. And the pattern always repeats itself. But now a new question arises. If floods can reveal hidden deposits, could other natural events do the same, perhaps even more dramatically? What happens when landslides, rapid erosions, shifting riverbanks, long droughts, or sudden changes in water level expose layers that are normally inaccessible? If one heavy storm can rearrange the entire surface sediment, imagine what other natural processes might bring to light when you know how to read the signs they leave behind. This leads us to another essential point. How can you find diamonds in environments other than rivers? Understanding how dense minerals behave is crucial, but interpreting rock formations, recognizing evidence of kimberlitic origins, distinguishing transported sediments from primary deposits, and applying basic field tests without specialized equipment all expand your possibilities far beyond a riverbank. And that's exactly why the book Gemology Journey for Beginners, available on Amazon, has become a valuable reference for newcomers. It organizes knowledge in a clear and straightforward way, teaching not only how to read post-flood rivers, but also how to recognize gemstone environments, identify mineral indicators, apply safe field tests, and avoid the beginner mistakes that lead to misidentification. The book doesn't turn anyone into a geologist overnight, but it builds a solid foundation that makes each new field experience more accurate, more informed, and more rewarding. In the next video, we're going to explore one of those geological signs that almost everyone ignores. We'll look at how certain erosion patterns and natural fractures can reveal valuable deposits in places no one expects, and we'll show real examples of discoveries made by people who learned how to read these exact details. Once you understand this, you'll never look at a riverbank, hillside, or rain-carved embankment the same way again. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, Gem Hunter.